So the, what we're going to be discussing today is predicting nonconformances. So um, we, we recognize that being able to predict when we're likely to have problems with the quality of our product will allow us to be proactive about addressing those problems rather than risk having the product fail in inspection and potentially having to get reproduced. So, you know, the obvious benefits are cost savings and, and even patient safety, because it allows us to stop the quality issue from developing and potentially making its way further downstream. So how did we approach the problem of predicting quality events in the, in the production process? Um, you know, it, it really, this speaks to kind of the role of the functional consultant and the, the client's business analyst in this type of project. You know, the very first, the very important first step in building a meaningful predictive model is ensuring that our business processes get transacted in a way that supports capturing the relevant data that's required for analysis, right? And that we know it's being captured in a timely and reliable fashion so that it can be subject to that analysis and scrutiny um, to, to produce meaningful information. So in our case, we know that the best practice for tracking quality events in Dynamics 365 is to create what's called a non-conformance record whenever we have a quality problem. And to link that, that non-conformance to the associated transaction record. So in, in our case, we know that whenever there's a quality problem on a production order, there should be an associated non-conformance that gets entered into D365 and linked back to that production record. So by observing the, the circumstances surrounding production orders from the past that were linked to non-conformances, we can use machine learning to predict which orders pose a higher risk of having them in the future. So I think you know what this speaks to is kind of the the importance not only of defining your problem, but making sure that you have a team of business analysts and consultants that understand the capabilities of your software to ensure that you're gathering the right information to, that can be brought to bear on, on a machine learning model. This is not just a matter of data science. It's also, it's a matter of merging data science with business process modeling and understanding a day in the life of your organization. And so what I'm gonna do now is kind of hand this off to Manuel and he's gonna to start to speak to, to that technical process that we go through. Now, the business consult consultant has gathered all this relevant information from the customer first, has translated all that into what it means in the D365 UI. And now we perform one more translation where we um, we take those fields that are important in the D365 user interface, the fields that you know customers and consultants and users discuss on the day to day, and we find the corresponding data entities that D365 has prepared in the background for this kind of data operations. So the there is this translation between what the UI uh, the fields that have been identified in the UI to where are those fields in our entities? How do those en entities uh, relate to each other? The technical, the engineer knows a lot about that from behind the scenes, but there's also that perspective from the business. So this, this conversation, um, I consider it key and, and, and not rushing through this conversation will, will uh, allow the engineer, will give the, the way I like to say it is, will give the engineer no excuses he will, he will, he will, he will, he be, he has to be provided with everything that he needs so that he cannot um, deviate from the goal, which is to predict non-conformances using the relevant data. So the next, the next step is, you know, it's very technical. You know, at this point, you, uh, you, you can use SQL tools. You can use Azure Data Factory. You can use things like Spark, and, uh, and prepare your data. Prepare your data um, from, from the technical side on one hand, 
and also for the functional side. So, so to accommodate all those requirements that Matt was beginning to describe, he, he picked one good example, the example of translating, a, a transforming a production order time date or day time, uh, transforming that production order day time to a, sh a production order shift, start shift. Um, and, and now, um, now that the data is ready, we have to worry about making this data that is ready available to the data scientist. So um, there is a dialogue there. The, the data scientist is meant to, uh, it, it has the authority, has the capacity to reject what is given to him or her if it's not organized in the proper way. And, and so there's a little dialogue between the, the engineer that is extracting the data from directly from D365, massaging the data, preparing it for consumption by the data scientist and the data scientist himself or herself. Again, a, a cloud hosted service that um, is sitting right next to all of this, like Matt was saying in the, in the first hour, the Power BI tool set, it's, a, it's, it's, it's become very popular already. Uh, it's, it's easy because it's easy to use and it's powerful and it's sitting right there next to your Power Apps, next to your Azure Functions, next to your machine learning uh, studio, and more important, sitting right next to your D365 ERP and, and, and your CRM potentially. One last way to, um, to see this whole thing. We basically started with a lot of data in D365, data that was extracted using data management uh, to Azure SQL. From Azure SQL, we used you know, uh, traditional SQL tools in this case. You can use other tool sets when it applies, depending on the, ki the, the, the kind of data you're working with, um, to transform that data and, and make it available to Azure Machine Learning. Machine Learning, the Machine Learning Studio does a lot of the heavy lifting and gives us ultimately a web service that we can use to make predictions. A web service that is prepared to receive input and return predictions. And, uh, and from there, we, we have um, a Power BI uh, set of reports and dashboards that are looking at, at that, that predicted data, that, that are looking at that future, you know, new, new data with the associated predictions. For, for that new data. And, and, and then that Power BI, the, the, those Power BI visualizations that include reports and dashboards can be embedded back into D365. And that's, you know, it looks like, it looks like an automatic control loop. So the, um, the experiment, I, I consider this experiment a success and, and we are working on, on new predictions uh, new, new predictive exercises that involve non-structured data and, and things of that nature, but uh, but I still think that with uh, with this tool set uh, and 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 this approach, starting with a, with a proper tool set and a proper approach, and then with, with with that you know having said all that, the good the right the right team you know the right user the right consultant the right engineer the right data science you have really, you, we do have access to these technologies that once again, uh, until not too long ago, were only the privilege of Fortune 500 companies or even less than that maybe, and uh, uh, centers of high learning 